Hello and welcome to Roadmap 2019, where we are interacting with major players in Nigeria's journey to the 2019 elections. I am Ladi Akiri Dolualei. Thanks for joining us. My guest on today's edition of the program says the herdsmen farmers clashes can be resolved through a more scientific use of land to favor all parties involved. He denies being corrupt, even though he is currently facing trial on charges relating to his time as governor. He also thinks that the opposition PDP is better prepared for the 2019 polls than it was for the 2015 one. Now, please join us as we talk to the former governor of Jigawa State and now a presidential aspirant on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, Alhaji Sule Lamido. Excellency Elijah Lamido, thank you so much for your time on Roadmap 2019. Thank you very much, and uh, viewers, my greetings to all of you. Now, uh, maybe I should start with the most obvious question. Um, you're campaigning to be president. Many people will look at you and say, you've been virtually everything else. Why are you campaigning to be president? Why do you want to be president? In fact, because I've been everything else, I'm campaigning because I want to pay back what I got. This country has honored me, has dignified me, gave me space to grow from a village boy to what I've been in life. You know, former this, former that, you know, former parliamentarian in 1979. You know, former PDP, uh, so, sorry, SDP chairman in Kano State, former SDP national secretary in Nigeria, uh, former candidate, former aspirant, you know, in all the parties I ran in the past, former foreign minister, former governor. So, Nigeria has been there for me all along to be very, very kind to me. So I think I will be there too for Nigeria. Well, do you think Nigeria is going wrong at this point? We have to be very, very honest. You see, the question should not be rhetorical. They should be genuine questions. Are we normal? Are we what we were four years ago? This country, look at it now. In terms of our cohesion as a nation, our unity, our security, you know, government, government and governance, you know, are we the same thing? So everything is wrong with Nigeria. You will all know it. And it's our own country. It's ours. It's not for anybody. So it means we have to make sure they know that we come together and they see how we can save this country. Now, some of those who will be listening to you and watching you today would say, just over three years ago, the electorate voted out the PDP which you have been with since Correct. 1999. You were Correct. a founding member of the yes. PDP. Yes. Uh, and three and a half years later, do you think that they've forgotten, forgiven, whatever it was that led them to vote out the PDP in 2015? You see, by our nature, we're fairly a bit impatient. We want hooks fixed. And to lead a country and address all the key issues in a country, it takes time. The life of the nation is measured major normally in maybe a third of years, not in, 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 in decades. We're only there for 16 years. And a party came on board which has no root, which has no history, which was able to address Nigerian emotions and then our divisions as a country, which has so many lies and demonized people and said, you know, Nigeria, your poverty is caused by the will be almost A or B. So Nigeria believed in them. This culture of lies. And they've been saying, you know, in leadership, there are some things we don't do. We must have some standard. I can't, you know, red line why we don't go down. But APC came. You know how it was formed. It is a contention of small, small parties coming together. But then even at that, in 19... In, in 2014, when they came together, they knew they could not have won the elections. Because the result of the previous elections in 1999, in 2003, in, 20, in 2007, in 2011, you know, the results were very, very clear that, you know, PDP was feeling all of them combined. So it means even though they have come together in 2014, they have to find a way of creating this disaffection, this disharmony, this ill feeling by blackmailing the party called PDP. And the PDP were thoroughly blackmailed to a point where we begin to feel ashamed of ourselves. 
the, the capacity of telling lies. And because the premise upon which you know the entire campaign was built was on falsehood, after winning the election, they cannot, they cannot government because the formation of the government is on falsehood. And so I think it's not for me, it's for Nigerians. They know what PDP was between 1999 and 2014. We have a very clear history in terms of our cohesion as a nation, our security, our economy, our social system, social services, our sister and brotherhood, we know what we are. And then after APC came on board, three years into it, with well, this two clear, two page history, page one PDP, page two APC. And this for Nigeria to compare and contrast. Are we today more united as we are in 2014? Are we more secure as a nation? Are we more harmonized, you know, in terms of brotherhood and sisterhood? Are we more united? Are we happier? And these are things which you know people should ask themselves because it's not me. If you're Nigerian, it's our own country together. Where are we today? So it means if the body is yes, then we change the APC. If Nigeria wants to continue the way it is, I have no problem. So you see, PDP as a nomenclature has done nothing wrong. You know, the lectures I've been saying, PDP are very innocent. Even in APC, there's a P. <laughs> you know, so, so, so this apology, you know, is simply because we, the operators, didn't have the patience. You know, and maybe what I may call the, the, the kind of uh, discipline to do things right. But then PDP was an a human institution. We're going to make mistakes. We made some mistakes. But then those mistakes shouldn't have been enough to destroy what we built as a party. Because if you look at history from 1999 to date. So I feel that the answer to your question is of me, is Nigerians. Because we are there for them. All the government, the parties are there for Nigerians. It's for them to say, look, are we secure, more secure now? Can you travel from Kaduna to Abuja without fear of being kidnapped? If you are living in Zampara, your house has been burnt. You know, you have you are, you are been displaced. If you are living in Sokoto, people are dying there. If you are living in Adamawa, people are dying. If you are in Trapa, so there is this everywhere. And so, really, it is beyond politics, you know, it is a reality. A government came about you know, on what I say, built on sec, security, economy, and corruption. And, and, and if you look at the government now, in terms of the security, where are we? In the economy, where are we? You know, in corruption. I mean, today, this government has turned corruption into a kind of, you know, an institution. Go to Central Bank, go to an NPC, go to the ministries. So, in everything they say, you know, they fail to live up to it. But they want to you know, it's still the Nigerian who should be able to really judge for themselves. It's not me. Now, uh, I'll come back to what you said about the economy, corruption, and security a bit later on. Okay. And ask you specific questions in that regard. But 